Did Jesus really reveal the name of the Antichrist? I will report the facts. You can decide. In Luke chapter 10, verse 18, Jesus said these words. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from the heavens. These words are written in Greek and translated to English. However, Jesus spoke these words originally in Aramaic, which is the most ancient form of Hebrew. As you know, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. If a modern Jewish rabbi were to speak these words of Jesus today, he would speak them in Hebrew, much the same way that Jesus would have spoken. So in Hebrew, Jesus said that he saw Satan falling as lightning from the heights or from the heavens. So what are the words for lightning and heights or heavens in Hebrew? From the Strong's Hebrew Dictionary, word number 1299, a primitive root word meaning to lighten or lightning or to cast forth, the word is barak. In the Strong's Hebrew Dictionary, word number 1300, lightning or by analogy a gleam, a flashing sword, or a brightness or a glittering, the Hebrew word is barak. So lightning or a flash of light in Hebrew is pronounced barak or barak. Now consider this amazing fact. The book of Isaiah is the source of origin for the Christian concept and understanding of Satan, or Lucifer, as Isaiah calls him, in chapter 14, especially in verses 12 through 19. In Isaiah chapter 14, verse 14, Lucifer, or Satan, is credited with these words, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. In the verses of Isaiah that refer directly to Lucifer, several times it is mentioned that Satan has fallen from the heights or from the heavens. The Hebrew word used in this text for the heights from which Satan fell is Strong's Hebrew word 1116, pronounced Bama. Bama is most commonly used to refer to a high sacred place as well as to the heights of the heavens or the clouds. In Hebrew, the letter Wa is often transliterated as a U. Some scholars use the O for this transliteration. It is primarily used as a conjunction to join concepts together. So to join in Hebrew poetry the concept of lightning or barak and a high place like heaven or the heights of heaven, the letter U or sometimes O, the Hebrew letter Wa would be used. So barak O Bama or Barak U Bama in Hebrew poetry, similar to the style written in Isaiah, would translate literally as lightning and the heights or the heavens, or lightning from the heights of the skies or the heavens. The word Satan is Satan in Hebrew, a direct translation. So back to Jesus' prophecy in Luke chapter 10 verse 18 if spoken by a Jewish rabbi today influenced by the poetry of Isaiah he would say these words in Hebrew the words of Jesus in Luke chapter 10 verse 18 as and I saw Satan as Barak Obama did Jesus reveal to us the name of the Antichrist I report you decide okay I'm gonna be going over some videos and then I'm gonna go over scripture and then I'm gonna get into the main of going through his entire life and what he's been going on with so that was the first one I wanted to share and let's go ahead and get the second one queued up Yes, we can. 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 Thank you, say. Thank you, say. Thank you, say. Thank you, say. 
Né, Rio Sei. Né, Rio Sei. Né, Rio Sei. the crowd chanting yes we can they're saying thank you satan as well as you say yes we can okay that's enough of that i can't stand to listen to Obama say thank you Satan over and over and over again in the crowd, but that's what the whole video is like. So there's another one. Let me go ahead and go through another one here. First of all, give an honor to God and our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Listen to the crowd cheering. No Barack joke. Obama. No joke. Y'all stand business. up right now. You got to Total serious business. And the crowd cheered when they heard for Obama much louder than they cheered uh, for the word God. So there's another one for you. Got a couple more of these. And I'm going to go to scripture and I'm going to start breaking some stuff down here. I want to thank God is the one and only true living God, the creator of heaven and the universe. Jesus Christ is God. Look at this one. Jesus Christ is God. Jesus Christ is God. I do. I hear the crowd blocking him out when he's talking about God and Jesus. Look at the huge smirk on his face, like it's so funny. He's such a funny guy, isn't he? Okay, let's get another one going here. On June 28, 2006, Senator Barack Obama gave a speech to the Call to Renewal Conference, where he explained why he finds it so difficult for America to use the Bible to help guide our public policy. Which passages of scripture should guide our public policy. Should we go with uh, Leviticus, which uh, suggests slavery is okay? Or we could go uh, with uh, Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith? Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount, a passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application? Folks haven't been reading their Bible. Senator Obama, after you so arrogantly mocked and ridiculed the books of Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and the Sermon on the Mount, taking those passages of the Bible so painfully out of context, you then condescendingly stated that, quote, folks haven't been reading their Bible, unquote, as if the American people don't know what's in there. The real question is, do you know what's in there, Senator? For instance, did you not know that most Christians and historians agree that the Sermon on the Mount contains the most spiritually inspiring words ever uttered by Jesus Christ or any other religious leader. And as far as your sarcastic remark regarding the Defense Department not being able to survive the Sermon on the Mount's application, I can assure you, Senator, that Christ would never advocate turning the other cheek to terrorists and America's enemies, as your smug laughter so clearly implied. And did you not know, Senator Obama, that the book of Deuteronomy which you also arrogantly mock and ridicule is what gave us the Ten Commandments. Folks, all those condescending remarks distorting our Judeo-Christian Bible did not come out of the mouth of Barack Obama's pastor, Jeremiah Wright. No, they came straight out of the mouth of Barack Obama. Folks haven't been reading the Bible. Paid for by... Okay, and I got one more of the videos, and this one piggybacks on the video where he was doing the thank you Satan. This is a rapper who did a video and with a bunch of other artists and you can hear exactly that other people when they say those words exact same thing happens. 
Okay, so all I can handle, my friends, of that. I can't listen to that too long. It just bugs my spirit too much. Okay. So in case you haven't realized yet, this is all about Mr. Obama. And I am, I'm 99.5% sure this man is the future Antichrist, if you haven't figured it out yet. I've done videos before, and uh, we had scripture in the one about Isaiah with Barack Obama. So let's go ahead and look at scripture and see what the Bible says about the Antichrist. Only the scripture, I have 19 scripture in the Bible that describe the future Antichrist. They match only one man and one man only, and that is Barack Hussein Obama. Number one, you should be able to read along with me too. He's more arrogant and self-centered than the others before him. That means stout and larger. When the Bible says he'll be stout and larger, it means more arrogant and more self-centered, not big and, and, and fat or gigantic. Obama is the epitome of arrogance. And there's a scripture right below it that uh, points it out. And you can go ahead and, and read that uh, on your own time. We've got Daniel chapter 7, verse 20. <coughs> Excuse me. The Antichrist will be more stern or fierce-faced. Obama has a very stern or fierce face when he wants to use it. He's got a very good, angry, fierce nasty face. You've all seen it before. And again, there's your scripture below. Different versions. Daniel 8.23. I only use the King James Version Bible myself. The Antichrist will be generally different or unique among politicians. Mr. Obama is the first African American leader of a huge nation. Of the nation, the, the, the biggest nation in the entire world. It can't get any more different than that. You can't go with anything more different than that. That is a huge red flag. Number four, the Antichrist would be a great unifier who effectively appeals to people across traditional lines of division. He'll be revered by all except saints. The true Christians hate him. They hate what he does. They don't hate the man. They hate his actions. But most of the world loves him. And when the Holy Spirit leaves and Satan possesses man, almost all the world is going to worship him except for those few who stand away from him. 47% of evangelicals, I read, voted for Mr. Obama this last time. Shameful. Revelation 13.3. Next, number five. He seeks total political control for his own glory, not for Democratic Republic or anything really for the people. Everything Obama does is for his own glory. You guys all know that. That was 2 Thessalonians 2.4. He'll be an icon of earthly success. People fail to realize that Mr. Obama has purposely ruined everything. And this is succeeding, not failing. When you purposely try to ruin things and it happens, you're succeeding. He also became an instant U.S. Senator and President with little experience, came out of nowhere, unheard of. That's Daniel 8.24. Number seven, he'll politically rise from a sub-national leadership position like a governor. Again, he became an instant U.S. Senator out of nowhere, unheard of, and the President with very little experience as a Senator out of nowhere, extremely rare. Daniel 7, 8, 11, 8, and 9. Number eight, he'll be shrewd, cunning, deceitful, skilled in intrigue. That's Obama to a T. Daniel 8.25. Number nine, he'll be empowered through others. A U.S. president is powerless himself, by himself. His power is derived from others, from the system, from the people. That's Obama exactly, the president of the U.S. Daniel 8.24. He'll be stubborn, relentless, mega ambitious, a visionary, with far-reaching goals. Bingo. That's Obama to a T. Daniel 8.25. He'll be extraordinarily proud and boastful. No one is more proud and boastful that I've ever seen than Barack Hussein Obama. Daniel 7, 8, 11, 20, 8, 25. And again, you can see the scripture on here. Save for yourself. He'll have disdain for women, which could, which could mean gay. And Obama is definitely gay, my friends. And I'll be covering that further in the video. His marriage is a front to give him clout. Or it could mean effeminate, which Obama is also very effeminate. He's not macho or manly at all. 
Daniel 11, 37. Number 14, inwardly, a godless megalomaniac. Oh, yes, exactly. Obama playing claims to be a Christian. He's a godless megalomaniac. He's wicked and evil. Daniel 7, 21, 25, 8, 10, 11, and 25. Number 15, he'll be a mega liar who actively opposes truth. <laughs> Obama's the biggest liar on the, on the planet that I've seen. Daniel 8, 11, 23, 25. He'll be a morally bankrupt hedonist. Bingo. Obama to a T. He'll f be foreshadowed by historical types including King Saul, Nebuchadnezzar, Caesar, and Hitler. Yes. He'll be a professing Christian, empowered by the false prophet and Christian support. He's a Muslim. He professes to be a Christian. He's a Muslim. And when the, the Bride of Christ is raptured, and when the tribulation starts, and the false prophet's here, that'll all fall into place. 2 Corinthians 11, 3, 15. And lastly, number 19, and this is the big one, along with him being the first African-American leader of the huge nation, the biggest nation in the world, actually. His name numerically tallies to 666. You got Barack Hussein Obama. 18 letters divided by 3 equals 6. Three sixes. 666, which is Obama's name. And, and in Revelation 13, 17 to 18. And he provides that no one should be able to buy or sell except one who has a mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For his number is that of a man, and his number is 666. Again, God wants us to be able to know of who the Antichrist could be. He will not be fully uh, Satan incarnate until afterwards, but he wants us to know. And let's go ahead and go over a couple pictures. Uh, this is the first Muslim president, and again, you see the halo uh, to show that he's uh, like a, a godlike character, messianic, but it has the, uh, the Muslim sickle on it. And here is one from Newsweek, a collage my friend sent me. You got a second coming. You got the new Messiah. You got the God of all things. You got the his uh, his regal conquest. You got him mocking Jesus Christ on the cross. You got the first gay president. You got the Messiah. You got the other one with Jesus, a deity on the top, baloney. This guy is bad, bad, bad news with a capital B. Let me go ahead and get this because I'm definitely not in here. My phone ring while I'm trying to record. All right, so. We went through all of those and went through those. That's cool. And here's my screensaver. I love it. Christ coming out of the tomb. Praise the Lord. And now let's go ahead and get ready to knock out the rest of the video. Let me turn my camera around. Get this thing out of the way. You can tell I'm not one of these professionals who does these videos and has them all out in the open. All I all I do is just the basics. <laughs> just the nuts and bolts. I'm just a regular old school Bible thumper. I don't know how to do the, the real cool special effects and things. Okay. Now all the videos that I just used, that I just did there, none of those belong to me. They're ones that I just found on YouTube and I will be putting the disclaimer for the fair use to be able to use those for teaching and instruction, which I'm doing right now. So let's go ahead and go back to the beginning with Mr. Obama. Mr. Obama, again, his original name is Barry Sortoro, but his adopted name is Barack Hussein Obama. He don't use the Hussein unless he's over in Arab countries and he, then he makes sure that he's, he's announced as Hussein. He tries to hide it in this country to have people hide his true intention. So let's look at him. I don't care if you believe his birth certificate is real or not. <clears throat> I don't care if you believe he's from Hawaii or from Kenya. It doesn't matter to me. I believe he's from Kenya and I've seen the birth certificate they put out. I've seen the experts who are not Republican or Democrat. They are just independent researchers who are proven that it's, it's falsified. It's a big phony fake document. And so I believe the man was born in Kenya. And if you go to Kenya, I've been there before. If you go to Kenya, signs everywhere. When you get off the airport, off the planes, all around, welcome to the birthplace of Barack Hussein Obama. But again, the sheeple here believe all the lies that Obama teaches because he is led by Satan, his God, and mankind is mostly led by Satan because they turn their back on, on the real God, Jehovah, and Jesus Christ. So they believe anything that Obama tells them. So again, look at the guy. We don't know anything about his past that's been, that he'll share with anybody. He's had all of his documents sealed, cost millions of dollars. No one can see what he's been bit into. 
But there are a lot of clues. There's one man who is a famous uh, homosexual who was in Chicago. He met Obama when he was uh, doing his uh, senator thing there, getting ready to run for senator. And this guy says he had a openly homosexual relationship with Mr. Obama in the backseat of the limousine in hotel rooms. There was a limo driver that was there and other people. And those people have uh, mysteriously disappeared. Many of them have and won't talk. But this guy does. And this guy has no axe to grind, no problem with Obama. He's just telling the truth of who this guy is. All kinds of people have came out and said uh, privately again because they're afraid that Obama will kill him for good news. Uh, for good reason. I'm not afraid. It doesn't matter to me. When I die, I go to heaven all that sooner. But they've said he was always in the gay bathhouses in Chicago and homosexual relationships there. You look at pictures of Mr. Obama when he was back in college. He's got a ring on his finger like the sodomites wear. And he's got, got a guy practically sitting on his lap who is his husband. That's before he met Michelle, long before there. And this is giving all kinds of signs with his hand and signs with his legs crossed that are signs that sodomites know because I've researched all this stuff. So Mr. Obama is definitely a sodomite. His marriage, I believe, is a front. His children are a front. He's bisexual, but I think he's very, very little hetero. I think he's almost all homosexual. So he had all this stuff going on in Chicago. Then this guy comes out of nowhere as community org organizer and becomes a U.S. senator, unheard of. No one's even heard of this guy. And then there's billboards all over Chicago. The, 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 the Messiah has arrived. Our Savior is here with Obama's picture on it. Then he's a senator just for a little bit of time, and then boom, he's the president of the largest, most powerful, na the most powerful nation in the entire world. Unheard of. No one knows anything about his past. He's president. And again, he's led by Satan. I believe he's the future Antichrist, and God doesn't let anything happen that he doesn't allow to happen. I, believe this is the, I know it's all part of God's plan, and I believe it's all part of the big Antichrist thing. And you look, when Mr. Obama became the, when he actually won, uh, the election on inauguration day if you look at, at his um, the lottery came out in Chicago where he lived the most of his life and the winning number of the lottery was 666 and this stuff is all factual it's all proven you can look it up and check it out his zip code in Chicago was 60606 this guy just reeks Satan and reeks evil everywhere around him he's a filthy wicked evil perverse man very bad news. Now let's look and see what's going on with his um, with his big agenda. Let's look at Osama bin Laden. I was active duty, and I retired back eh, back in the around the mid 2000s. And Mr. Obama claims that he killed had the seals kill uh, Osama bin Laden. The problem with that is when I was active duty back in 2002, we got word that bin Laden had died of a rare kidney disease, kidney failure, at a U.S. military hospital. And this plane actually had taken off and landed around the time of 9-11. So Mr. Uh, Osama bin Laden has been gone for a long time. So who, who did they kill at, the, at that place in uh, Afghanistan? Probably some guy, and a lot of people look like bin Laden. I'll tell you that right now. I've been all over the Middle East fighting wars over there. Been all over those countries. They, a lot of people look like Osama bin Laden. So I believe it was just some guy that was a patsy, and you look at pictures of, of, of the supposed bin Laden in that bunker, it looks nothing like him at all. So this guy's gone, and look at, look at, the, uh, look at Saddam Hussein's sons. When they were slaughtered during the Gulf War, they plastered their pictures all over the news. They had DNA everywhere. They had, they had post-mortem photos. They had photos of them being bullet-ridden like Swiss cheese. But yet Obama says, oh no, we can't show uh, Osama bin Laden because it's against the Muslim principles. Hmm. Well, Hussein's sons are both Muslim as well. You're full of garbage, uh, Obama. So then he says he can't do that. Then he says they have a burial at sea, which the Muslims are totally against. There's no DNA anywhere. There's no proof of anything anywhere. You know why? Because it was not Osama bin Laden. And then you got the SEALs who were going there. The SEALs cameras, I was in special spec ops. Uh, I was with, with Marine Recon, so that's, that's the Marines version of the SEALs. And the cameras they had on their heads, the SATCOM cameras, they mysteriously went out just at the time when they went into the compound, and as soon as they supposedly killed bin Laden and came back out, they mysteriously came back on again. Baloney. Doesn't happen. So then you've got a bunch of SEAL Team 6 who, who go on a helicopter on a routine rescue mission in the mountains of Afghanistan, and they get shot out of the sky 
by one lone Afghani who has a rocket propelled grenade launcher on his shoulder. First of all, I'll tell you a couple things. You don't send SEAL Team 6 on a routine rescue mission. You send regular ground pounders, foot soldiers. You might send maybe a couple of Rangers. You might send a couple of Green Berets. You're not going to send SEAL Team 6. The majority of SEAL Team 6 that was in Afghanistan was on that bird. And out of all the tens and tens and thousands of miles of mountains, if you put them all together in Afghanistan, how was it that that one lone guy was at the exact spot where the helicopter was landing? Baloney. And those helicopters have all kinds of guns to shoot people, and they're, they're full of Navy SEALs. Baloney. These guys were killed. Why? Was it to silence them? You can decide for yourself. And these SEALs have been being dying mysteriously in all these different things since then. And you've got Benghazi. The word has already been out. An admiral who has no, no bone to pick, a four-star admiral who's retired, said he's got proof that Obama was, that was all set up by him. He was going to kidnap our ambassador in Libya, hold him hostage so the blind sheik, the guy who was responsible for the World Trade Center bombing back in the 90s, the most, one of the most wicked evil terrorists in the world, so Obama could trade him with Morosi in Egypt to do Morosi a favor and do like a prisoner swap. Obama set the whole thing up. Then when it went south and went sour, Obama sat back and let it happen. And when the general, the Marine general tried to, to intervene, Obama wouldn't let him, told him to stand down. Now Obama fired him because he wouldn't play ball with him. And while the, and those brave SEALs, former SEALs who came to the rescue of those guys, Obama let him die. He is guilty of treason. And he, he puts his fall guy, Hillary Clinton, the amnesia con concussion lady who uh, conveniently fell and then she just falls on, she fell and conveniently had a concussion. She falls on a sword and says it's all her fault. Obama is, is the, never, he's untouchable. People tell me they're going to impeach him, baloney. He is untouchable by man. Only God can touch Barack Hussein Obama. Wicked and evil man. People say that, that he is angry at Iran. He's making backdoor deals with Iran. He's got an Arab coalition with Egypt. He's got Iran getting involved in that. He's got Turkey. He's got... Saudi Arabia, he's got Jordan, he's got the United Arab Emirates, he's got Lebanon, he's got Palestine, and he has Israel also involved in this. They're all on the side, and Obama's putting on a three-ring circus acting like that everybody's at everybody's throat. He's been secretly making a coalition, and with Syria, and he's waiting. He's just waiting for the right time to come into Israel and make peace with her. He's just waiting. He just hired Hegel and Kerry to be the bad guys, he's going to play the good cop with Israel, I can guarantee it. And another guy, has secret memos have already leaked out, that Obama has been secretly, as he sends millions of our tax dollars to help the so-called widows and orphans over in Syria, he is setting it up where he's going to have a, a false flag where there's going to be a nuclear exchange somewhere from Syria. They're going to blame it on Assad, but the Americans are going to be behind it, Americans and their proxies, whoever the terrorists are over there. And I think that's what's going to start Isaiah 17, when Israel <laughs> retaliates and blows Damascus off the map. O o Obama is so wicked and evil, but he's untouchable. You are never, ever, ever going to touch this guy. He is the biggest hater of Christians I've seen in my life. He has Christian statues uh, covered over. He has Christian writings covered over. He is a big, phony liar. He is as fake as fake can be. I, I, just, I just am filled with righteous anger at this guy. Total, total, total baloney, what he gets away with. And, and, and people just let him. Again, the last election, after all the way he wrecked this country, all the way he wrecked this world, you could have put Bozo the Clown up against him, and, and they, they would have blown Obama away. He won by a landslide. This guy's untouchable. He's where he's supposed to be at, and I believe firmly, I believe firmly that as soon as the rapture happens, he's going to be the one that makes peace in the world. He's going to be the one that moves to the U.N., because he owns Obama owns the U.N., he owns the EU, and remember the EU works for the UN, not the other way around. So don't tell me about how powerful the EU is supposedly. They work for the UN, the UN's in Obama's hip pocket. You've got leaders from all over the Mideast. You've got leaders from Turkey. You've got leaders from, from Jordan and from another country just in the last month who have said openly that unless Barack Obama makes peace in Israel, there will be no peace. And they're saying they want to march all the Arab leaders right to Washington and asked Mr. Obama to beg him to come to the Middle East and make peace. And look at Israel just a couple days ago. Big headline. It wasn't a U.S. paper. It was it was a, an Israeli paper. They're bragging about now how they asked Obama for permission 
to be able to attack that convoy in Syria. The Obama gave them the green light. Since when does Israel ask anybody for a green light? I'm trying to explain to you guys the power this satanic evil man has. And today, I just read, they just, they're just they building him a second Oval Office, a plush a, a plush man cave where he can go, go and, 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 and he says get a lot of heavy duty work done and do his own thing. Baloney. The Capitol building's been there since the 1700s. There's been no second Oval Office. He's getting his own second Oval Office. People cower at Obama's name. He is loved around the world. People around the world love this guy. They've had polls that if we were attacked by aliens, you notice all the alien talk everywhere? If we're attacked by aliens, who would you want to to uh, have as leader of the world? The majority of everybody says Obama. If you were, if the world was under attack, could you want to be, who would you want to be the leader? The majority says Obama. Now, aliens are demons. And I believe that aliens are going to be the excuses what happens in the imminent rapture. I believe Obama's going to say, hey, the aliens took all those Bible-thumping, Jesus-freak, holy rollers like Paul Kidd and all the rest of them that are caused problems, they're gone. The, the, if the little children are gone, hey, that was just a bad thing, but they're gone, and that was a good thing. Because most so-called Christians are going to be left behind, and they're going to say, hey, there wasn't any rapture because we're still here. They, yeah, that's right. They took the bad guys like Paul Kidd. He deserved to go. He, he's evil. He's, he's on some evil planet somewhere. The rapture hasn't happened. We're right here. Then they're going to recognize, they're going to see Obama, and they're going to think he's their Lord and Savior, Jesus except for those who refuse the mark of the beast and refuse to take it. Obama's bad news, my friends. He is very, 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 very bad news. He does whatever he wants to do. He's made us a sodomite nation. Just like ancient Rome. When they became a sodomite nation, look what happened to them. And when their military became a sodomite military, look what happened to them. They fell down to the ground and died. I love the sodomite people. I love everybody. I, I even love Obama. I just hate what they do. I hate the sinful lives that they live. God will take care of Obama. Jesus will take care of him. That's not my problem. My problem is just to pray for everybody and to expose people who they are. But now all this stuff, and look at the Boy Scouts. They're getting ready to make the Boy Scouts sodomite. And Obama said, oh yeah, it'll be good for those young boys to have sodomites teaching them and, and learning them the ways of life. I'm telling you right now, I am tired of what this earth's become. I'm tired of the wicked filth and evil it's become. Look what's happened since Mr. Obama got reelected. New portals of demons have opened up everywhere, and even in his first term, you've got zombie stuff everywhere now, which is again demonic, that are biting people's faces off and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You've got all kinds of murders everywhere. You've got all kinds of, of, of gun stuff, and I believe again that Obama and the government are behind a lot of this junk. They want to take away the weapons and disarm this country because you know why? If they can disarm the country, it can be like all the other socialist countries and communist countries that Obama loves so much. His slogan forward is an old Hitler, Stalin, Lenin slogan. Take everybody's weapons, then you can control everybody. That's what Obama wants to do. People are blind, they can't see it. I know pastors that worship Obama, and if you say anything bad against him, they, they call you names, and they say you're an evil liar. I'm just tired of people not seeing who Obama is. This guy is the most wicked, evil person I think has ever lived. He said over and over and over again, he's the one that, that, that wants to make peace with Israel over everybody. Even Tony Blair has been walking around the whole world telling everybody, telling Europe, telling the, the, the Middle East, telling the UN that, that Blair wants Obama to make peace in Israel. Obama is always the name you hear, Obama, 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 Obama. People can't see it though. They think he's just some great God with a little G. And he's just going to make everything all right. I'm just so tired of it. He hates Christians. He is a wicked, 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 evil man. It just makes me sick to see what he gets away with. It's time to wake up, my friends, and smell the coffee and see what's going on. Understand who this guy is. Understand what his agenda is. Understand what he has going on. Very evil man. And I'm going to tell you something about his birth certificate, too. I believe this. I won't be here. I'll be in heaven, praise the Lord, from the rapture. I believe this. I believe he's going to come out after a rapture and, and he becomes the Antichrist and say, oh, the birth certificate thing? I can tell you now. I couldn't tell you back then. I don't really have a birth certificate. You know why? Because I'm God. And God doesn't need a birth certificate. Think about it for a little while. He's, he's playing to everybody. He's playing to the immigrants, trying to make illegal immigration legal so everybody can go broke. He's saying, he's saying now he's trying to get all the nations to, to uh, promote sodomite marriage. And the rest of the world has been falling along behind this now. And the world's falling apart. He said today that he's got the states now taking men or man out of all the, all the language because it's not fair to, to women to have men or man in any word. So take men out of menopause. Uh, take You can't even say woman because woman says one man or one man. You can't say manhole cover. You can't say pinmanship. None of that stuff. 
they're taking it away. I'm telling you guys facts so I can back up from things that I've Googled and proven to be true. I could go on and on and on and on and on and on with this guy. I've got so much stuff on him. So much stuff. But if you don't believe after all that he's been doing, if you don't believe after all that's been going on, you're never going to believe. He's got FEMA. I know that, that, that W started FEMA, but Obama's got FEMA full-fledged. they got roadblocks set up in places now. They've got mobile buses going and checking everybody else everywhere now. You've got surveillance stuff everywhere now. You've got all these FEMA camps since Obama took his first term of office. They're all staffed now with, with full-time guards ready to start taking people into those things. Obama's been, been building all kinds of secret underground bunkers and cities and stuff. This guy is bad, 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 bad news. Okay? He's behind the majority of the lion's share of all the evil you see in this country and in the world. He plays everybody against everybody. And again, don't believe he likes Christians. He hates Christians. The, the down-low club, they called it, from his Reverend Jeremiah Wright, all the sodomites that were that were at the church. Obama was part of that crew as well. You can believe what you want to believe. You can think what you want to think. But all the stuff that happens, it can't be coincidence. One or two things can be coincidence, yeah. But, every, but everything else happens, can't be coincidence. This guy's got his hand on all the evil, bad, wicked stuff you can possibly imagine. So you believe what you want to believe, and don't come back and tell me that you think that because uh, Prince Harry or... One of the princes held a lamb in their arms and they're and they're the same age as Jesus was when he died. They're the Antichrist? No, the Bible never said the Antichrist would be that. And don't tell me the Antichrist is going to come in his own name. Or don't tell me the Antichrist is from Turkey or from Iraq or wherever. The Bible doesn't say that. I gave you the scripture of what the Bible says about the Antichrist. You have to decide for yourself whether you believe it or not. And lastly, I've got another video out on the Great Whore of Babylon. The Bible says the Great Whore of Babylon will be destroyed to rubble. In the Great Tribulation, which is coming up very, very soon. Everybody thinks it's Iraq. They think it's Rome. No. I've got scripture, tons of scripture on that one as well, that shows scripturally there's only one country in the entire world that matches even a small percentage of all of the tribute, all, all the traits of the Great Whore of Babylon. And this country not only matches a few, it matches every single one. Guess what country it is? The USA, the divided states of, of Senerica, Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah too, formerly America. I believe we're the great whore. And I believe after Obama takes over as the Antichrist, whenever this country's going to be destroyed by God's hand, however he does it, I believe Obama's going to fly out from the UN, make his headquarters over in the Middle East. He's going to go over and desecrate the Holy Temple in, in Jerusalem and start hunting down Jews and the, and the few Christians that are left. So understand, there's always a tiny percent. That's why I always tell people this. I'm only 99.5% sure who he is. There's always a tiny percent that could be somebody else that comes along, but if they do, they join him as, as, a, as a candidate. He's not ever taken off the list until someone else comes out. And again, as little time as we have now for the imminent rapture, I don't think there's time for anybody else to appear. So believe what you want to believe. I believe the Holy Bible. I believe what I see with my own eyes. And again, I can go over so many things, but I've got dozens of videos on this guy. He's attacked me in my dreams. I've got videos on that as well. He's came in my dreams and verified to me in several dreams that he is the Antichrist, and he's tried to bend my thumb off my hand and whisper in my ear that he could kill me and try to have Secret Service guys kill me in my dreams. I'm telling you, I know who this guy is. You believe what you want to believe. But the main thing to remember is this. It comes down to this. The rapture is imminent. The rapture of the bride of Christ is imminent, my friends. Only God knows the day and the hour, but we know we're in the season. We know we're right around the corner. You have to make one or two choices. One, get saved by Jesus Christ's precious blood. Live the way the Bible says, cover to cover. Make sure you repent of your sins after you're saved. The Bible says at least 250 times you have to repent, repent, repent every time you sin after you're saved. Don't believe the once they always save liars. They're liars. I've got proof again of all this stuff. Send me, give me a message. <coughs> I'll send you proof of all of everything that I'm telling you about. I've got scripture to back everything up I say. I don't say anything I can't back up in scripture when it comes to the Bible. So you can live that life and go to heaven, be raptured very soon, or go to heaven if you die first, or... You can keep being a backslidden Christian, refuse to repent, like most of the church does, or not get saved at all, and get left behind from the imminent rapture, have a good chance of dying and all the calamities that happen right after the rapture, or have your head chopped off at best case scenario to be able to go to heaven later, if you can be saved later, without the Holy Spirit around to help you, and make it through all the seven years of hell on earth, or you can be saved right now, and make it easy. It's a no-brainer, my friends. Times are about to get really rough. Most Christians are going to be left behind, like I said earlier. So don't be don't be fooled when you see all the people you thought were Christians are still here. They weren't real Christians. 
God's word never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He never changes. The Bible says repent at least 250 times after we're saved. And God doesn't joke or raise. He's not some comedian in the sky. He says what he means. He means what he says. Let's pray. I love you, Jesus. I thank you for a chance to get this video out, to get this word out. And I pray that people would wake up. They'd see this video. It would move their hearts, move their lives. They would understand it. And they would just see the truth before it's too late. I pray that you would just wake them up, Jesus. And just again, help them all to know exactly what the Bible says about the Antichrist. Exactly what the scripture says. And exactly what Mr. Obama matches to what we to what we see. I ask it in your precious name. Amen. If you watch this video and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day, went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father. Since that time, you're making a place in heaven for all Christians forever. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In the precious name I ask it. Amen. You pray this prayer. Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. And when you get saved, get your King James Version Bible. It's the living, breathing Word of God. Will you feed your body with food and water every day? This Bible will feed your spirit and soul if you read it every day. Pray to Jesus daily. He's your new best friend. He loves you. He wants to talk to you every single day. Get water baptized as soon as possible. If you've been sprinkle baptized in the past, do it over again. It doesn't count, my friends. Pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit, sanctified from head to toe by drawing closer to Christ, by reading the Bible, by praying, by living for Him. Take that King James Version Bible to church I told you about. When the pastor preaches, when I preach, anyone does. Compare what we say to that Bible. If it don't match, you close it, you walk out immediately, you unfriend, you unsubscribe, run away as fast as you can. Because anyone who lied to you in Jesus' name, anyone who lied to you about what the Holy Bible says, will drag you to hell, my friends. If you have questions, comments, concerns, you want me to pray for anything, from a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, contact me. I have the gift of faith, mustard seed faith. I didn't earn it or deserve it. Praise the Lord, but I prayed for it, he gave it to me. I'll pray for you every day a miracle in your life. I know that God will perform that miracle if it's within his holy will. And if he does, it'll be all through his praise, honor, glory, power, might, majesty, strength, love, compassion, mercy, kindness, tenderness, gentleness, understanding, long-suffering. Nothing to do with me. I'm the least in God's kingdom, a tiny fish in the huge ocean, a slave for Jesus Christ. Please share the link to this video, this channel, with friends, neighbors, co-workers, loved ones, and strangers. Drop it in the blog, plant the seed, and walk away. Let God water so it can grow. The cotton candy, powder puff, syrupy, fluff garbage you see all across the internet, all across the world, is the word that leads to hell. The word that points to, you, to the cross of Christ where the Holy Spirit can gently kneel you. Jesus Christ can wash away your sins with his precious blood and save your soul that points to heaven is a King James Version Bible, verse chapter book, cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, where I preach it on this channel. Not because I'm anything, it's God's everything. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. May God bless you. Thanks.